Hi there, and welcome to this video where we'll take a look at what's new in texture baking in Marmoset Toolbag 5. We'll walk through exciting new features such as the Interactive Baker and how it provides additional freedom to edit your scene in real time as baking runs in the background. We'll check out Viewport Texture Preview modes for a breakdown of the baking outputs in isolation. By texture baking using the bevel shader, we'll dig into time-saving hard surface workflows to achieve smooth and robust chamfer effects on hard edge models opening up new avenues, allowing the use of CAD or Boolean geometry. We'll use Toolbag 5's versatile material layering system to create more complex material setups using masks, which will then bake down to simple textures. We'll try out baking to UDIMs, made effortless due to Toolbag 5's support for multiple UV tiles and common conventions. Let's take a look at the new interactive baker in Marmoset Toolbag 5. This is now the default mode for baking and allows continuous interaction with the scene as textures bake in the background. This allows you to change material properties, transform component bake pieces, add new models to the bake groups, or simply move the camera around to better view bake results. Each change made in the scene that directly affects the bake will reset the process automatically and update the resulting textures, adapting and refining until the bake progress bar is complete. Should you prefer the original bake mode, you can toggle back to the offline baker in the bake mode option and selecting offline. This will interrupt interacting with the application and can be useful if you have an older GPU or a very complex scene. In this case, using a CAD style bracket model as an example, I want to bake some extra detail from floating high poly geometry into my low poly textures. The floating geometry consists of some screw heads, a small welded metal strip and a chamfered widget. With the default interactive baker on, I set a bake directory and bake group so that the floating geometry goes into the high bake group and my low poly bracket model goes into the low bake group. As the interactive baker is enabled, a normal map is already being baked in the background. Here, I'll add curvature, ambient occlusion and albedo and the progress bar updates to tell me the new number of textures that are baking. Of course, interactive baking can be paused or cancelled at any time in the case that there are a lot of changes needed in the scene that don't require a bake update. We can easily check on the baked material results by hitting the preview button at the top of the bake panel. Alternatively, to look at a breakdown of baked textures individually, we can enable bake project passes from the viewport dropdown. It can be useful to split the viewport and enable a different pass per texture to review each one with the same camera. Unlike the temporary map preview you can trigger from the map section in the baker, this display remains even if you deselect the baker object. These view modes are distinct from the render passes in Toolbag 4 in that they show baked texture detail. Here you can see a render pass view for normals on the left, and beside it on the right is the bake project normals view, which includes pixel based detail from your baking session. Bake project view modes become automatically available as additional baked textures are added to the output maps panel. You can find these modes in the viewport render quality dropdown here. Conveniently, the same shortcuts that are used to switch between render pass previews and texture project maps also work here. M for Marmoset to switch back to full quality and comma and period or full stop keys to go to the previous and next map types. Let's go back to our normal map for a second. I'm not quite happy with the placement here, so I'm going to adjust the positions of the floating geometry. With the material preview enabled, I can now select the hidden high poly pieces and as I move them, you'll notice how the baked textures are updated in real time. A slight darkening of the albedo color of the high poly bracket material results in an immediate change to the baked material preview. Let's take a closer look at the new bevel baking system. Bevel shading is a ray tracing technique where shaded normals on hard edges can be modified to make them look chamfered. Geometry is not affected, so there's no modeling cleanup required. So this technique can be useful from working with low poly meshes, CAD exports, 3D scans, or high poly meshes with non-uniform topology such as meshes made from booleans. Bevel shading works across convex and concave edges and can be toggled to work across overlapping meshes or simply bevel the same surface only, allowing for finer control. We'll use the ray trace viewport to set up bevel shading, then bake to textures for use in the raster viewport or elsewhere. Bevels can be baked from high poly materials, saving significant time as you can now skip the sub D workflow for hard surface objects and instead create a mid poly model that is used for both the high and low poly meshes. 
This method allows for tidy and uniform shading and multiple materials can be set up and assigned for models that require bevel thickness variation. Using this approach, you will need to duplicate the mesh and use a unique material for the high poly, making sure that the bevel option is enabled in the surface rollout of the material. As before, bake groups should be used to avoid intersection errors between parts that are close together or overlap. For best results, it may be necessary to configure the hard edges or smoothing groups differently on the high and low meshes. For the high, hard edges are useful for defining the base shading and where bevels are placed. For the low, it's advisable to ensure that the UVs are split at the same locations where hard edges are applied. This will provide the closest approximation of the bevel in the normal map. Bevel shading can be previewed in either the ray tracing mode or hybrid mode, but we recommend using ray trace mode for best quality previews. Once baking is complete, the results can be previewed in raster mode too. We can tell at a glance that ray tracing is enabled by the indicator here on the top left. This bracket model has been created entirely using Boolean subtraction in a 3D modeling app, where primitives of various dimensions and resolutions were cut from a central block. Many of the resulting geometric angles are a hard 90 degrees. Booleans can be fast and useful in hard surface modeling, but the resulting geometry can be less than optimal to work with. Bevel operations on meshes like this can be extremely problematic. So let's check out an easier approach. First, let's set up the project. Here, I'll add a bake project from the scene menu. Selecting bake project one, I'll set up an output directory for my baked textures. Let's leave the resolution at 2K for now. Normals is checked by default. So when we add our models to the bake groups, the interactive baker will kick off with a normal map to begin with. Next, I duplicate my model and rename it for clarity. Here, I'll apply bevel shading to the high poly duplicate. This will be added to the high poly bake group in a moment. The brass brushed material from the toolbag library is perfect for this demonstration, as the model has been unwrapped to facilitate a brushed surface, ensuring that the grain flows along the geometry believably. After that, I'll enable the bevel options from the surface rollout. Note that the existing normal map is preserved and the bevel shader works seamlessly with it. I'll take the bevel samples up to about 16 and then adjust the bevel width. The bevel is uniform and clean. The harsh look to the sharp edges has been softened and reflections are gathering nicely along the edges in a more eye-catching way. Now I add the low and high poly models to the appropriate bake groups. Immediately after the groups are populated, the baker has kicked off in the background and rendered a tangent space normal map which we can view on the model by pressing the solo button here. The high poly bake group is hidden by default, but if we return to the bevel material, we can change the bevel width and see the normal map update accordingly. That's the beauty of the interactive baker. Let's add albedo, curvature, ambient occlusion, metalness and roughness, and the baker will render each of those. The progress bar now tells us that multiple maps are being rendered. Note that the bevel width also affects other baked textures such as curvature and ambient occlusion, and the soften parameter here can be used if results are too harsh. Let's check out the results of our bake with the preview material button, and then switch out of ray trace mode into raster mode. Here we can see that the beveled shaded edges have transferred perfectly to the baked textures. As a final touch, to bring the raster mode presentation even closer to the ray trace version, here I've been enabling local reflections and screen space ambient occlusion. The improved Baker in Toolbag 5 now supports UDIMs, making it very convenient to work with multiple higher resolution textures that can be applied to a model without sacrificing detail. This can be configured in the Output Tiles panel. The UDIM tile lists here will be automatically populated based on the number of tiles detected in the UV layout of the low poly model. Selecting UDIMs here, you may notice that there's a global resolution value. This can be set for all UDIMs at once or if finer control is required, this can be overridden and individual UDIM resolutions can be set per tile. Convenient naming conventions for the final output can be set up by using the append tile and separator options. These options ensure that the output can be easily read by your target application. When the interactive baker is active, each tile will render one at a time in sequence. The bake progress bar keeps track and shows when all tiles have finished baking. In Toolbag 5, layered materials can also be baked to texture. This provides enhanced freedom to create complex materials, setting properties for each material layer, such as albedo hue, roughness, metalness, and others, while simplifying the end result by baking. 
The baked textures can be further edited or used elsewhere. Geometric material property baking has been improved from Toolbag 4. Now, if the high poly material uses a normal map, this will affect baked ambient occlusion and curvature detail too. A powerful feature, allowing even more creative freedom in how you construct materials to really nail that final look. Let's look at this example. Here I have a high poly model that I want to bake from. There is geometric detail and it has been enhanced with a normal map, clearly evident when I toggle it here. I'm using Toolbag 5's triplanar mapping in this case, so I'm not worried about UV layout on my high poly model. Triplanar mapping allows any material to be applied to any model, including every material from Toolbag's extensive library, with control over tiling, rotation and edge fade. I've set up a bake project as we saw earlier in this video, and with curvature and AO enabled in map output, we can see the effects on the baked textures. With the entire material baked and normals displayed, here, when I toggle the normal map on the high poly model, the end result is affected on the low poly bake. Notice the difference of the curvature map when the normal map is toggled on and off on the high poly material. Now let's look at a more complex setup. For a much deeper dive into material layers, please check out the video What's New in Rendering on our channel. In this example, a CNC machined gear assembly model will be used. This hard surface model was quickly created by Boolean subtractions from a cylinder, and the geometry can be difficult to work with as a result. Laying out UVs and chamfering hard edges on a mesh like this can be extremely challenging. So here I've opted to use material IDs, triplanar materials and vertex colors as masks, which I've baked in a 3D modeler. In the vertex color channels, I've stored worn edge masks in the red channel, dust masks in the green channel, allowing a separate blend for horizontal surfaces and ambient occlusion in the blue channel for some rust effects. This setup allows for multiple blended materials on different material IDs that share the same vertex color masks throughout. The low poly model here is similar to the high poly but has been simplified somewhat for real time use. With bake groups set up earlier and interactive baking enabled, albedo, roughness, metalness and ambient occlusion are added to the baker and in seconds I have a result that can be viewed in raster mode. Note how the normal maps applied on the high poly model are now baked into the output textures, also directly affecting AO and curvature. Lighter areas on the curvature map and the thickness of edge normals depend directly on the bevel shading set up in the layered material for the high poly model. Thank you for watching, and please check out the other videos on our channel to see what else is new in Marmoset Toolbag 5.